All right, so project three, and that is the personal library. And to get started with this, just open this repository link. And we're gonna be start using Repl.it rather than Glitch now because that's a recommended platform. So what you wanna do here is just click code and then just copy this URL. And then in Repl.it, just go and sign in and then click the plus button right here. Click import from GitHub and just paste in the uh, link right there and then click import. And that will start um, generating a project on Repl.it for us. Now this personal library is um, pretty simple. I quite like this one because the number of tests required are quite low. So what you can do is you can submit a new book here, like um, let's say meditations, and then you'll see the list of books right here. What you can do is you can click on this book right here and you'll have this ID. And then what you can do is you can add a comment uh, like this. And then this will attach that comment to the book. And what you can essentially do is basically just browse these books and then just see the comments that are written in them and add in a new comment. You can also click this button to delete that book. Or what you can do is you can also press this delete all books button. And this front end basically works. This has already been written for us. It works on some um, API routes that we're going to write. And um, you can use these forms to test those API routes. So again, this will take this will take some time to load it into Repl.it. So you just want to be patient here. Um, it's yeah, it's just it takes a while. Um, for this project, there are um, so there's an a client.js which basically just runs the front end and it runs the API routes from these uh, elements. The style is just a style style sheet. We don't have to worry about that. Um, in roots api.js, this is where we'll be writing out the API routes. Um, so that's that. Um, FCC testing. Don't worry about that. Um, then in tests, um, there's no unit test for this one, but there are functional tests that we have to fill out. Um, and then in views, we just have the index.html, which we also don't have to tweak. And then the test, don't worry about most of these ones. Um, then the test runs from the serve.js. So this, as you can see, just creates an express app. Um, it loads index.html and then it runs this API routes, which is basically this method in API.js that just attaches all those routes to the app. And then it listens on port 3000. So once you have it um, imported into Repl.it, what you also want to do is in the terminal, you just want to run the npm install just to make sure that um, everything from the project has been installed. I think Glitch does it automatically, but in Repl.it, I had a few like problems for it to install. So you just want to run npm install there and then wait for that to happen. And once that's done, you can basically get ready to be, get started on this project. All right, so once the installation has finished, whenever you want to start up your app, um, you want to make sure that you press this run button right here. And I wouldn't do it from the terminal because it doesn't load um, environment variables and stuff like that. But you just want to click that run button and then it will start up your app. And the URL for your app is going to be whatever the name of your project is. So in this case, it's going to be library. Then it'll be your username like this, and then it'll be .repl.co, like that, and that's where your app will be hosted. I think the first time you start it, you get a link to it. And then that's a, a solution that you wanna submit. And if you run it, you can see that absolutely zero testing whatsoever. So we could just submit it right here, but we're gonna do it properly. Um, in order to store our books, what we're going to be do using is MongoDB. And I'm also gonna be using Mongoose for this as well because um, I've just personally preferred, I don't know if it's cheating or not or whatever, but um, I just think it's far more simpler to use it because a book is technically, it's good to model the book and use the model. So what I'm gonna do here is do npm install. I'm gonna install MongoDB and then just the latest version of MongoDB. So you would just want to put uh, MongoDB at latest like this. And that will install the latest version of MongoDB. Um, you might be wondering where to store environment variables in your password because we don't have the env. So to do that, just click add file here. And then just call the file.env like this. And to write an environment variable into here, so I'm just going to put a database password in. Um, uh, sometimes it does take a while. Um, to start. So what I'm going to do while, in the meantime is in your MongoDB ad, let's just click create database here. And you want to create a database here. So I'm just going to call this personal underscore library or something like that. And the collection, we don't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to call it books for now, but Mongoose will automatically create the books collection for us. 
Um, so once you have the .env file, you can just create a variable like this and then put a string in here and that'll be the database password. So you just want to put pw or some variable name equals and then your database password in here. Um, I'll put my real one in later on. We also want to install mongoose, so it's be npm install uh, mongoose at latest like this. Oops. Like this. And um, what you want to do is then just go to the npm page for mongoose and uh, just because that's got the connection method that we're going to need and what we're going to be doing is we're not going to even touch the server.js and we're going to do all our work in roots and then um, api.js um, I don't know why this is being so slow but I'll just go to it normally and we're just going to be requiring mongodb and mongoose and then we'll just connect it to the database right there and then um, my god this is slow all right, so what you want to do here is just say, um, just remove all of these because we're not using MongoDB client. So let's just say let MongoDB equals require MongoDB like this. And then just say let Mongoose equals require Mongoose like this. And what you want to do is then uh, go to your clusters here and then click on connect, um, connect your application um, node.js 3.6 or later and just copy this and in here you just want to do something like just do this after the app function is started because remember the app function is basically the um, uh, this uh, API roots function being run right there so we want to make sure that the, the function started here and then just say let URI equals and then just create a string with that URI and in here uh, you just want to concatenate your password in from the environment variables so you want to just do plus process dot env dot pw like this. Remember this environment variable can only be read when you use this run button right here. Um, and for database name, remember that I called it personal underscore library. So just put personal underscore library or whatever you call your database name right there. Then what you want to do is in mongoose, you just want to go down to, um, there's connection method, but I keep forgetting it. Um, it's the, I think it's just um, mongoose.connect. Actually, you know what? Um, if you go to free code camp, you can find it there. Um, if you go into API microservices, uh, MongoDB and Mongoose, um, and then install inside of Mongoose, yeah, this is the method right there. So you just want to copy this method um, and then in in here, just paste that in. And then where it just says your URI, just change it to URI right there. And that should be everything you need to have the database connection set up. So what, when the server starts up and then this function gets run, um, will be connected to the database through Mongoose. All right, so now we're going to get started with these tests now. And the first one says that nothing from my website will be cached or cached, I don't know how you say it, in the client. So what we want to do is make sure that no resources or information is stored in the browser for easy access. And the way we can do that, remember, is by setting up um, these headers right here. And you can do this easily using helmets, no cache middleware, and then mounting it for all requests. And if you look at your um, package.json, we can see the helmet has already been installed, so we don't have to install it here. And it, if you look at a um, readme.md, it says that um, you will add all security features to server.js. So just go into server.js here, and you just want to require helmet first here because you'll see that it's not required despite being installed. So just say let helmet um, equals require, and then just put helmet in like this. And so now we have helmet. And what we want to do is mount helmet's no cache middleware for all routes. And I'm just going to do this under body parser here. So it's mount for all routes, remember, it's app.use. And we just want to run helmet.no cache. And this will set those headers from before. Oops, if I can spell properly. There we go. So if you run the app now after this, and then you go here into uh, more tools, um, developer tools and click on network here and then click on all and then just clear this and then if you refresh this page right here and then you just click um, the request for your project we can see that the cache control header um, right here has been set um, 
then the um, pragma one right here has been set. So that's this one. We can see that um, the expires has been set and we have can see the target control has been set. So we've basically set up all the headers now and this will tell um, Chrome not to cache any content to um, the local storage. So that's test one completed. So the next test says that um, the headers will say that the site is powered by PHP 4.2.0, even though it isn't. And if we look at the request right now, we can see that Express likes to advertise itself by putting this um, powered by Express header right here. And what we want to do is call a helmet middleware to adapt that. And the way we can do this is by using the helmets um, hide powered by middleware. And if you look in here, um, it says that it hides the middleware and it says it takes no options. And that's the latest version of helmet. But as far as we're concerned in um, the version of helmet that's installed in this, we do have options in it. And what we can do is um, give an option called set to, and then we can set it to anything we want. So what we want to do here is in save.js, after the no cache, we just want to say app.use, and then it's helmet dot hide powered by like this and inside this you can give um, a configuration object and in the configuration object what you can do is you can just say set to and then give a string of what you want to set this header to and if you put php 4.2.0 for example that will then set that header to 4.2.0 so if i stop this net right now and then um i just start this up again and then we go ahead and clear this and reload the page. And if we look at um, our pages request again, we can see that the X powered by a header has now been spoofed to say PHP 4.2.0. And um, this is a minimal security right there, but um, someone looking to exploit our site will think it's running on PHP and then not use any uh, known X express exploits. But regardless, um, we have basically said that the site is powered by PHP 4.2.0. So that's test two completed. So before we tackle the third test, which involves creating a new book in the database, since we're working with Mongoose, we need to create a schema and a model for the book to dictate what a book can contain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this straight after we've connected to our database. I'm going to create a book schema right here. So I'm just going to say let book schema. And remember the constructor for a Mongoose schema is new and then mongoose.schema like this. And inside this, remember, we give an object of the properties that we want the book to hold. And remember that by default, we'll have an ID, so we don't have to worry about that. And um, what we saw in the example project was, um, if I open this up again, is that um, each book has a title right here, and then it has potentially an array of um, common strings right here. So the first thing we want to have is a title here, and I'm going to make the title a string, so we'll put type string. And we want to set required to true because we don't want to create a new book without a title. And the second thing I'm going to have is comments. And I'm going to set this to an array of comments. So you just want to say comments like this. Sorry, an array of strings. Um, and then what you can do is just give the square brackets here to represent an array of. And inside it, you can put the type you want. And you can just put string like this. So this schema basically takes the, the whatever model um, uses it has to have a string title and then comments, which is an array of strings. Um, I think that's right, yeah. And by the way, this doesn't have to be declared. Remember, this isn't required. So the next thing we wanna do is create a model from this. And the way we can do this is to say, we can say let and then say book, which is a JavaScript variable for this equals. And then we can say mongoose.model. So this is the model that create, this is the method that creates a model. And the first argument is the name of the model. And we just wanna call this book. And this model name will be used to create our collection. So this will be pluralized into books. And the second argument you want to give here is a schema that we want to use. And we can just use this book schema that we created right here. So now we have this book model and we can use it to create books and work with the um, book collection in MongoDB. Um, so we're ready to get started um, with doing the next test now. All right, so the first test says that um, I can post a title to slash API slash books to add a title. And you'll get an object back with the title and the unique ID from MongoDB. And this basically has to create the book in our database. So if you look at the example project and I put in um, a new title, book title in here and then click Submit, um, we can see that we have a JSON response with the title of the book and the ID right there. So that's what we want to return.
So this this root, um, which is what this form and this form both submit to, is um, post slash API slash books. So in here it's API slash books, and we want to fill out the post function right here. And from server.js, we could see that um, body parser was already installed, so we don't have to worry about that. And we can see that um, in the response body, the title of the book that's been post provided, either from a form or from chai or something like that, is already been assigned right here. So the first scenario that we want to um, test for is when there's no title submitted. So in the example project, if I don't put a title in and click submit. We can see that missing title right here has been returned. So that's what we also want to return if the title doesn't exist. And the way we can do that is in here, we can say if exclamation mark title. So if the title doesn't exist, what we want to do is return a rest.json. Remember rest is the response right here. And we just want to return missing title like this. If we save that, and then I start this up again, and I go ahead and refresh this, um, you might have to try it twice if it's not running, or three times. There we go. So if I just submit this with no title, we can see that missing title right here has been returned. So that's fine. But um, our test isn't good enough, and we have to write a functional test for this. So let's go into functional test right here. And the first functional test is an example of the get root, so don't worry about that. And what we're doing is the post slash API slash books um, with no title given, this one right here. So we just want to fill out that test. And I've already written it, and I'm just going to copy and paste it, but I will explain what's going on. So I'm just going to copy and paste it, and then um, I will talk through it. So what this test essentially does is it starts up the server, then it makes a post request to the root slash API, I don't know why the syntax is messed up, slash API slash books, and it sends nothing inside it, so it doesn't send a title. And then it checks that the response body is equal to the missing title text right here. So the next scenario is where we do have a title. We want to save this to our database and get a JSON response back. So the way we can do this is back in API.js. So if the title exists, what we want to do is create a new book model with this. So we can say let new book equals, and then we can say new book like this. And inside it, we can give an object. And we want to set the title to the title from the request body right here. And we want to set, for now, just set comments to an empty array for now. And we'll add in the comments later. Then what we want to do is call the save method on this new book to attempt to save it into the database. And remember that this has a callback function that takes in an error. And the data returned this time is an instance of the saved book document. So we can just say saved book like this. And what we can do in here is say if there was no error, so if the error doesn't exist and um, the saved book exists, so the book was saved okay, what we want to do here is say uh, rest.json, so we want a JSON back and we want to JSON the saved book back to the user, which will contain the title and the ID and everything else. So if we run this again, and then I go ahead and refresh this, um, a couple of times. It does take a while to start up. And in here, um, let's submit a book. So I'll submit one of my favorite books. So I'll put the old man and the C like this. And then if I click submit, we can see that the object right here has been returned and we have the ID, we have the title. And if we look in personal library and then in books, we can see that the entry has been created right here. And not only that, because the front end has already been uh, written for us, if I wanted to submit something through the front end, so I'll say meditations like this, and click submit, that's also been added to the database. And if we look at the um, response right here, we can see that, hang on, um, or maybe this one doesn't show the response, but um, yeah, we, we can. It, it has been added to the database, and we can verify this by just going ahead and refreshing this. And we'll see that, yeah, it's been created right here. So that's not good enough, though. We do have to write a functional test, unfortunately. And the test we're implementing here is this um, test just above the one we just wrote. And that's the um, post API books with, with title. And again, I'll copy and paste it just to save time. But um, I'll explain what's going on, of course. 
So we just copy this and paste it into here. And what this does is it posts again to a slash API slash books. And this time it sends a title right here. So it sends um, crime and punishment like this. And then what it does is it checks that the status was 200, which is okay. It checks that the title has been returned correctly. And it checks that the the ID field of the response body is not null. And what I'm also going to do here is at the very top, I'm just going to create a variable called ID because remember our future routes to delete and add comments will use the ID. So I'm just going to set this to an empty string for now. And then in this create created book, what I'm going to be doing is just storing the ID as well so we can use it later and then log in that to the console. And finally, if that's all okay, it'll call the done function, which allows it to progress to the next test. So yeah, now we've got a way to add um, add books to our database and we can do this using the post route. So that's um, this test three now completed. All right, so the next test says that if you um, run the get root slash API slash books, it retrieves an array of all the books containing the title, ID and comment count, which is the number of comments. So in here, if you go to um, slash API slash books and then you run the get, oops, I don't want to, um, submit a post here. So if you just go to get slash API slash books like this, we can see that we have an array right here of all the books in here and the comment count says the number of comments they have as well. So that's what we want to return. And um, that's also what's happening here, which is what's being used to render this front end right here. So what you want to do is you want to modify the um, get root right here and you have to return an array of books. So what you want to do here is say, um, hang on. So first thing we want to do is create an array of books to return. And the reason we're creating an array rather than just returning the um, results from the mongoose search is because we can't really modify those documents. So if we put them into an array, we can't do that. So the next thing we want to do is call the find method on the book. And remember the first argument of the find method is a selection criteria. And since we want to return all the documents, we can just give an empty object right here. The second argument of the find method is a callback function. So we have an error as the first argument, and then we have, I guess, the results as a second argument. And this is an array of book documents. And what we want to do is, um, so let's, we want to just create a new book for now. So we'll say let book equals, and then we can say, um, actually what we want to do here is say if error. So if there's no error, and the results exist. So if there was no error and we have results, then what we want to do is we can say results dot for each. So for each book, so for each result, sorry. So what we're doing in here is basically saying if the array of results exist and there was no error, we want to call the for each method to look through each result in the results. And what we want to say is let book equals result. And if you just assign it like this, um, it's not, it's still not modifiable. So you just want to say to JSON like this. This converts it into a JavaScript object, I guess. Not really a JSON. Um, then what we want to do is we want to add the comment count in. So we want to set the comment count field. And what we can say is the comment count is going to be the book.comments.length like this. And um, we, you can delete the um, array of comments property if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it in for now. I and mean, you can use an object delete property in there. But uh, again, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is say array of books um, dot push and I'm going to push the um, new book in here. So again, what we've done is for each result that we got back, we convert it into a JavaScript object from a document and then we assign it to this book variable. We set the comment count field to the number of comments that the book has and then we pushed it to the array of books. Then what we want to do here is just um, return a rest.json and we just want to send back this array of books. So if we save that now and then stop it and then restart your app, um, it will might take a while to start up again. I don't know if it's up. All right, so it was just being a bit slow there. Um, so if you just go to slash API slash books now and just run the get root, what you'll see is that we have this array right here and we have all the book objects. And you can see that the comment count field has been added showing the number of comments as well. So everything is um, in order right there. And um, that's not enough though. We do have to write a small test for it. So if you just go into um, functional tests, 
text.js. Um, again, I'm going to copy and paste in the text just to show you, but um, just to save some time, but I will explain it again. So the, the test we're implementing this time is not the example get API books. Um, what we're actually implementing is this one right here, test get slash API slash books, and just paste this in or write it out. Um, again, I wouldn't bother writing this test out by yourself. Um, so what this does is it run it. Uh, remember that we just created two books here. So even, even if there was no books in the database, we should have, or we created one book here. Even if there was no book in the database, we should have one. What this does then does is checks that the status is 200, which is all right. Um, it checks if the body is of the response is an array. It checks if it's this is basically the example test that I've copied and pasted here. Um, then it checks if the the it looks at the first entry and it checks if there's a comment count field, a title field, an ID field. And if that's all okay, it'll call the done method. So now what we've done just now is just implemented this get root and we can now return an array of all the books in a database. And if you also go to the home page, um, the get root is also running here, which is what's being used to render this list right there. So we know our get root is working and that's test four completed. So the next test says that it, if you run the slash API slash books and then give an ID as a parameter right here, what we'll do is get back a single object that contains basically the book document. So it contains a title, an ID, and the array of comments. So if I were to um, just copy out the one of the IDs in here um, in the example project and I go in and go to slash API slash books, then I paste in the ID as a, as a request parameter. We can see that the document for that book right there has been returned. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing. And the route that we're going to set up for this is if you go into um, api.js and um, it's, um, it's it is a get root, but I'm just trying to find it. There we go. So it's this one right here. So we're on the root um, slash API slash books slash ID. So we have an ID parameter here. And what we're essentially going to do is basically just find and retrieve the document from here with that ID. And we can see that um, the ID is right here. So we've got the ID from the parameters that it's been assigned to the book ID. So what we want to do is in the book we want model, we want to call the find by ID method. And this is the mongoose method, remember? And um, inside the object, the first argument is the ID to search for. And we can just get, use the book ID right here. No need to call the object ID constructor. Mongo, um, mongoose will take care of that automatically for us. So that's all right. So next, second argument is going to be an, a callback function that takes in an error and a result. And the result will be the book document that gets returned. And what we want to do here is say, if there was no error, and the result exists. We just want to say return uh, rest.json and we just want to return the result back to the user. So if I save all of that um, and then stop the server and I run this again, what I'm going to do here is just refresh this maybe three or four times. Um, hang on. I've made a problem here. Oh, I just realized what I just did. Um, it's because I put an object around it and I'm not supposed to. This is just the function arguments right there. So if I restart this now, um, it shouldn't throw up any errors in here. All right, cool. So if we just uh, refresh this, um, maybe like three or four times until it decides to wake up. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do now is just copy the um, ID for the old man in the sea. And if you just copy that, and then if I go into slash API slash books, and then slash, and then put the ID in, we can see that that document right here has been returned to us. And we have the ID, the comments array, which is empty right now because there's no comments. And we have the title right here. And if you go to the, um, actually, we'll sh I'll show you that later. Um, so the next thing we want to do is write out the functional test for this. So just go back to the functional test page. And the test that we're writing this time is slash API slash books with ID um, right here, ID in DB right there. So if I just, I'm just going to copy and paste this in again, and I'll explain what's going on. So this is, again, it's just a similar test. So I'm going to copy this, um, paste this. Um, again, you can write this out or just copy the one I made. So what this does 
is it basically sends a get request to slash API slash books and then slash the ID. I remember that we stored the ID when we created um, this book here using the post request right there. So we know that book is in the database. So we just added the ID. So it's basically like entering this uh, URL in at the top. Then it checks that the um, ID is equal to the ID that we supplied. And we check that the title is indeed crime and punishment. And if that's okay, so we're just basically checking to return the book that we created in our post request. Um, it just, it runs done right there and we're all right. So that's the, that's a test for that right there. And that's basically it really. So we, we've got a get root now with an ID parameter to get a specific book's details. And this has also been implemented automatically in the front end because if I click one of these books now, we can see that the ID um, automatically gets returned right here and the comments will be displayed here as well. So that's basically um, test five completed now. All right, so test six says that you can post a comment to slash API slash book slash ID, and you can add a comment to the request body. And this will basically add the comment to the book and it will create the comment in the database. And then what we want to do is return um, the book, including the new comment. So I'm gonna just show you a quick demo for this. So the way you can post comments from this, by the way, from the front end, if you're not using try, is you can just use this um, thing right here. So you just click a book right here, and then you can put in a new comment like this. And if you click add comment now, um, the, co the basically, um, I don't know if it, if, if it will show up here, but basically um, in the, um, there'll be a response returned and it basically just shows the output of the comment. So if I just put something like this, add comment, we can see that we have the book, the response, we have the ID, the title, and then the array of comments. So basically just the book document right there. And what the route we're gonna be implementing this time is going to be the post route right there. And remember, we have the book ID from the request parameters and a comment will be attached to the request body either through try HTTP or through body parser. So we have both the ID and the comments. And the method that we're going to use is, if I just go to the mongoose API, um, it's gonna be the find one and update method because that's that basically um, does everything that we need to do here. So this is in um, the model class, oops, um, just go to API. And then it's, the, it's called uh, find by ID and update right there. Sorry, I might have said find one by update. I'm in find by ID and update. So what we want to do here is say book dot find by ID and update like this. And the first argument to this method is the ID of the book. And remember that we have it from the request parameters and it's been assigned to book ID right here. The second argument to this is going to be the update object. And this is the properties that we want to set. And the way you can um, add something to the comments array is, um, I'm just gonna copy and paste it because I forgot to be honest with you. Um, you can call this, oops. You can call this push operator. Um, I'll just explain how it works. So you'll say like, give an object right here and you'll say dollar push. And this push um, operator will take an object and in the object you set the key as the array and then the value as what you want to push to that array. So this basically says push um, the comment right here, which is from the request body to the comments array of that, um, of the document that we find. The third, um, and the third um, argument is an options object. And we need to set one option here because by default, it will return the um, unmodified old document for, for some stupid reason. I don't understand why, but it, we have to set this um, new equals true to, the, um, to make sure that we get the updated one with the new comment back. So down in here, you just wanna put new and then you wanna just set that to true. And the final argument is a callback function and that has an error and it also takes in um, the result of our operation, which in this case is the updated um, book. And what we want to do here is the same procedure as before. So if there was no error and the updated book document exists, by the way, if the updated document doesn't exist, it means the ID was wrong and we'll program that in later. We just want to return a rest.json and we would just want to return the updated book back. So if I save all of that now and then I stop this and then I restart it, um, then I'll hope and pray that there's no errors. Yeah, that seems to be all right. So 
and what I'm going to do here is just uh, reload this. And what you can do is you can comment on a book ID. So I'll just add a um, comment to the old man in the C. So I'm just going to copy this right here, paste this in, and it's say something like this book has changed my life. It is a really good book, actually. And if you submit it, we can see that um, the comment has been added to the comments array. And we've basically got the entire document back. And again, if you take a look at the database, you'll see that this has not just been added to the um, response. In the database as well, we should have the comment inserted right there. And we can see, um, in, if we go back to the front end of the app, um, right there, um, we can see that the comment is there right there. And this form also will post to that. Um, that's not enough though. Once again, we have to do the functional test for this. So just go to the functional test page and let's see what I'm gonna copy and paste now. All right, so this, this looks like a long one, but I will explain what's happening here. All right, so what this does is it sends a post request to um, the ID of crime and punishment, which again, we created up here. And then what it does is it, it to the request body, it will add the comment it, called test comment in. Then what it does is it checks that um, the, um, I've just logged it because I was having problems before, but it just checks that the response of body is comments array includes a test comment right there. And this is the array includes method right there. Then what I've also done is since this is the last test we'll be running, I've just sent um, a delete request for that ID as well, which we haven't programmed in yet, but this is just to make sure that um, when we're running the test, because annoyingly the way this test suite is set up is it repeats over and over. We don't want to spam our database to a point where we lose all our proper entries. So um, I've just sent a try a request to actually delete the book with that ID, which again, we will program in later. So that's basically it really. Um, we've actually set up the post route now so that we can add comments. And this has also been hooked up to the front end. So um, you can also add in a comment through here and that will also work right there. Um, the, it's not amazing, but it does function. And you can see that we have two comments right there. So that is basically um, this test, which was one, two, three, four, five, six completed now. All right, so test seven says that um, you can send a delete request to slash API slash books with an ID parameter to delete a book from the collection and we'll get delete successful if returned. And um, obviously you can't do this through the URL address bar because it's a delete request. But um, I'll show you in the example. If I wanted to delete, let's say this OP8 book right here, that sounds like a drug. Um, what you can do is you can just click this delete book button. That will run the delete request for that route. And if I click on that now, we can see that it says delete successful here. And um, you can see that the response also says delete successful. And if you refresh the page now, we can see that the OP8 has gone now and we are pure. So um, what we want to do here is basically set up the uh, delete route. So in api.js, this is the route that we're setting up and we have the um, ID from the request parameters right here. So what we want to do is we want to call the mongoose's um, find by ID and um, I think it's find, yeah, find by ID and remove this, find by ID and delete as well. I don't know the difference between the two. So we want to say, um, oops, not that one, um, that one, find by ID and remove. So in the book model, so you'll say book dot find by ID and remove like this. First argument is the ID of the book we want to remove and that's book ID. And the second argument to this is basically a callback function. And what we have here is we have an error. And then with the deleted book, by the way, even though it's been removed from the database, does get indeed get returned to us um, just in case we need to log it or something like that. And what we want to do here is say if and once again, if the error doesn't exist and the deleted book exists, what we want to do is say return rest.json. And we want to say, um, what was the message again? It's like delete successful or something like that. Um, yeah, I've lost it now. I think it's, I think it's yeah, oh, okay, it's here, cool. So it's just delete successful. So we just want to JSON that back. So let's, 
try this out now. So if we stop that and then start this up again, again, remember that we can't do this from the URL bar. We either have to use try HTTP or we have to use the delete button, which sends the delete request automatically. So let's create a new book here, which doesn't mean anything. And let's just assume that this was a mistake and we want to delete this. So if you just click on this and then um, click delete book, we can see that even though nothing gets returned here, we can see that the, there is a JSON response that says delete successful and it's been logged here. And if you look at the um, database, I should have actually shown you this database before with the book in it, but um, it basically did create it and it's been deleted right there. Now there's no official um, functional test to write out for this one, but um, what I'm going to do is, hang on, actually is there? No, there isn't. But um, what I'm going to do is, like I showed you in the last challenge, um, the last test we run is this post test right here. And what I've just done is, um, when that's been finished, I then call a delete for the ID, just to make sure that our database doesn't get spammed. And at the end of the test, the book does get deleted right there. There's no testing for this again. The purpose of this is just to make sure that our book gets deleted. So yeah, just in the end of the post request, before you call done, just send a delete request and then call done inside it. Um, again, this is totally optional, but trust me, you do want to do this. Um, so yeah, that's that's um, this test right there completed. All right, so test eight says that if I try to request a book that doesn't exist, um, will be returned no book exists. And basically this is for all the routes where we're concerned with um, dealing with a book ID. So let's say if we put a random ID in here and then try to insert a comment. Okay, that's just weird. This doesn't actually seem to return the error message in a lot of cases, but um, basically we will see that no book um, exists has to be returned when the ID is not found. So we basically just have to modify the routes where um, we're dealing with the ID parameter. And the first one that we where we deal with the ID parameter is going to be the post comments, um, which is right um, here. I'm looking at the wrong file, aren't I? All right, um, it's in the, um, let me find this. Yeah, post comment right here. So what, what will happen is if, if the ID um, of the book doesn't exist for some reason, this one, if the ID doesn't exist and the document doesn't exist, there won't be an error because not finding a document isn't an error, but this updated book will be um, either like a null and nullish value or a falsy value. So what we want to say here is else if, and then else if the uh, updated book doesn't exist. So it means there was no error, but we didn't find a match. We just want to say return rest.json and it's just no book exists like this. And we can't just implement this here. We have to implement it in two other places where we deal with the ID. And this one, we deal with the ID as well, where we're trying, trying to delete a book by its given ID. And what we want to say here is say, if the deleted book doesn't exist, um, we want to return no book exists. And the other place, I think, is where we try to get a book by its ID. Yep, right here. And what we want to do here as well is say, if the result doesn't exist, so if we didn't get any results in our search, we can also JSON back no book exists. Um, all right, I thought I was panicking there because sometimes when stuff gets hidden away in um, Repl.it, I don't know how to bring them back. That's why I start panicking. So you want us to run this again and um, wait for that to start. All right, it's listening on port undefined, fantastic. So what I'm gonna do now is try and comment on a book that doesn't exist. So if I just put an ID in like this and then I try to comment on, I try to put a comment in like this, we can see that no book exists has been returned. It's the same thing will happen if we try and delete a book that doesn't exist. Um, and finally, let's test out the get root. So if I put slash API, slash books, and then I just put a random ID in here. We can also see that no book exists has been returned right there. And we also have to fill out our final, um, I think it's our final um, functional test as well. So 
just go to functional test.js and I think the only one missing now is this one, get API slash books with no ID in the database. And this is just gonna be um, a very similar thing that we did before. So where is it? Right here. So I'm gonna copy and paste it again because I'm lazy, but I will explain what's happening. So what's happening here is that um, we basically send the get request to slash API slash books. And then I just added in the string ID doesn't, that doesn't exist as the ID parameter. It, this can be anything right here. And what we're basically just making sure is that the bodies um, of the response as new book exists and then calling the done method to move on. So yeah, that's, so now we basically have a system there is so that if an invalid ID gets entered, we return an error message rather than the server just crashing. So that's um, test eight completed now. All right, so now we're on to test nine and what it says is that I can send a delete request to slash API slash books. And this is without an ID at the end. And it says it deletes all the books in the database and we'll get returned and complete a delete successful. So the route that we're setting up now is going to be a delete route for just slash API slash books without an ID. So if we go back into api.js and um, we are at, so this is a delete with the ID right here. So we wanna just look at the delete without the ID, which is this one. And the way we can purge or delete an entire collection is we can call the, um, hang on, where is it? It's called the remove method on a mongoose model. So what we wanna do here is say book.remove. And the first argument to this is basically the condition. So or is um, a, a search filter for the, the books that we want to remove. And since we want to remove all of them, we just want to put an empty object in here. Um, and then in the callback function, basically we have an error here. And the second argument isn't really anything because the collection doesn't get returned or anything. It's just been cleared from the database. But we do get back this, um, I think it's like this JSON status or something um, that we get back. Um, method or comments I don't know yeah we do get we just get some status thing back with the JSON and it contains a number of documents deleted or something so I'm just gonna call this JSON status right here and what I'm gonna do is say if there was no error we don't have to worry about the status by the way we're not logging it or anything so if there was no error and the JSON status exists um, I don't even think we have to do the status part here we can say return rest.json and we want a JSON back, um, complete, delete, successful. So complete, delete, successful. All right, so that should be all of that. So I'm gonna restart this. And um, what I'm gonna do is just remove all the hard work that we've just done here and then purge our database. So in here, um, just clear this. And you just wanna click delete all books here and that will send that delete request out. Um, and we can see that we have a response right here saying complete delete successful right there. I don't know why it's not being logged on the front end. Um, and then if we go ahead and refresh this, we can see that we have zero results. So all our book documents have now been deleted. Um, I don't un really don't understand why you'd put a delete button right in the front end of the app, but oh well, this is just for practice, so that's all right. Um, um, and that's it. I don't think there are any functional tests for this one. So we should have all the functional tests filled out now. So we're ready to get started on the testing now, which is the last user story. I'm going to finish the final test. And what we it says is that um, all six functional tests are required and passing. So to do the tests on this, um, what you want to do is, um, if you look at the readme.md um, instructions it says that you have to set this environment variable called node underscore env to test so you want to stop your project here and then go to the env files and you want to say node underscore env like this and you want to just assign this to test like this um be careful with the spaces just remove them and next time you run it it will run the unit test before it starts on the server and sorry the functional test and i'm just going to quickly very very quickly just go over um what the tests are doing all over again so the first thing we have is the example test. And what I've done is I've just commented that out because um, if you just purged your database like I did, um, 
basically what will happen is that this will throw an error because there are no books to get so then the get will fail so you want to just make sure you comment that out so the first thing it does is sends a post request to api slash books to create a new book and sets a title as crime and punishment and then it checks that um we have the document returned with the title being the same the id field is not null and it exists and then it basically assigns the ID to this ID or string right here, which you can use later. It then posts to API slash books with nobody, and it checks that uh, the missing title error gets returned. Then it runs the get root. And remember, we have at least one book in here um, that we just created, even if it was purged. So this should fail. This should pass always. And it checks that the response is an array. And it checks that using the property method, that it checks that the first element of the response has a comment count field, a title field, and an ID field. Then what it does is it runs a get root for a specific ID. And we first tried with an ID that doesn't exist. And we check that the no book exists error message gets sent back. Then what we do is we do it with the ID of crime and punishment that we created earlier. And we check that the response body's ID field is equal to the ID and the title is equal to crime and punishments, which, which was the um, or document from the database that should have been created. Then finally, we run a post route with um, to the crime and punishment book using this ID here. And then we send along a comment saying test comment. And then um, what we do is, we can just remove these log statements actually. Um, we just check that in the response, which should be, remember the document um, with the new comment included. Um, we check that the comments array of it, running the includes method here, um, test comment returns true right here. And then what I finally done is before I called it done here, I also sent a delete request to um, to delete the crime and punishment book because these tests, every time you do it, it'll start spamming your database. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So what you want to do now is now that we've um, add, now that we've um, set up the environment variable on node underscore env to test, you want to just run this right here. And... Um, just wait for that to happen. And we can see that we have all six functional tests passing right there. So we're good to go. Um, if these tests fail, um, it's very likely to be a problem with the test rather than your actual code if you tested it right here. Um, so if you're really frustrated with it, I wouldn't bother worrying about it too much because it takes ages to get these tests working. Um, you can just copy the tests that I've done. Um, as long as they pass, you know your app is working correctly. So yeah, that was the last test right here. So I'm just gonna do some CSS styling to make this interface look a bit better and then I'll come back. All right, so what I've just done now is I've added some CSS styling right here. And um, in index.html, what I did was um, I commented out most of the um, infamous user story stuff because I've, and I've just kept the front end part right here, changed some of the contents of the tags. Um, and yeah, and then I've removed some of the divs. Um, and if you refresh this now, we can see that it looks um, a whole lot cleaner. And what you can do is you can add a new book here. So let's add the old man and the sea again, like this. You can click submit new book here, and then you can see that the book comes up on the left or right here. You can click on that, um, and then the book comes up here, and you can add a comment here, like this. Again, this is just the U, the, the free front end UI from before, and I've just changed it a bit. So I can just refresh this again. And um, I can say another comment in here, um, add a comment. And um, it doesn't come up straight away. That's just the way the front end was implemented. But you can see the comments now. Um, I can add another book here um, and then submit that. Um, and then that comes up. And then I can add another one. So yeah, it looks um, a lot better in my opinion now. And you can just browse through these books right here and add a comments and view them. And if you want to delete a book, you can just click delete book right here and you can just refresh the page and the book is gone. And again, if you want to delete all the books, just click this button right here. Um, nothing gets shown here, but if you refresh it, you can see all the books have gone. So yeah, that is the personal library project completed right there. So what you can do is just go ahead and copy this and paste this into here and then go ahead and submit it. Again, it was working before, but now we've done it properly and we can move on to the next challenge.